Hey, what's up everybody? Justin Meyer is back here with another video for y'all. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about my guitar journey, how I find these instruments, how I go about doing this stuff, and how things just really happen to fall in my lap. I can't make it up, man. I, I have no idea why it is, but it always works out. The right place, the right time, is really how I've found all of this stuff over many, many years, okay? But before I go on with this video, please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like the video, and drop a comment down below with what you guys think. And also, I'm so happy to announce that I'm offering one-on-one -on -one private Zoom call lessons. These lessons are amazing. They're all filmed on a 4K definition camera, all with professional audio, and I give you guys a lot of concepts within this hour-long lesson. You could always go back and reference the video. And folks, I'm teaching people from all over the world. They tell me constantly that these are the best guitar lessons they've ever had in their entire life. So if this is something that you're interested in, hit me up at jkm4231 at gmail.com. And if you'd like to support the channel in another way, I have a Venmo and PayPal tip jar. Thank you. Now on with the video here. So here I'm holding this beautiful 64 ES335. This is one of my favorite guitars that I own. Now I only own seven instruments, that's it. <laughs> only seven instruments. I don't wanna have a bunch of instruments because this stuff always needs maintenance, it needs work. You always, it's constantly moving around, man. You, you gotta get it dialed up right. And uh, I just don't wanna be maintaining, you know, a hundred different instruments. That's why I have a very slim, but very powerful collection, man. And all of this stuff is really thought out. Everything that I own, there's a reason behind it. It's not just a random impulse buy or some random stuff that's like, oh man, I've just got to have this thing for no reason. No, it's not like that at all, man. All of this stuff is really well thought out. And now here in Nashville, I'm lucky that I have all these connections here in Nashville because I've been here for almost 10 years now at this point as a pro musician. I've worked and I've worked as a musician for a long time now here in town. So I have a lot of connections with great players. And, um, you know, like this ES335, this literally just happened to fall in my lap. You know, I didn't really think about it, but what I did do was I had reached out to this player. He's a wonderful guy, an amazing guitar player, wonderful guitar player, Ford Thurston. And I had texted him, I said, hey man, you know, if you happen to hear of any cool 335s that you really like, and I really respect him as a guitar player, you know, and if you come across anything that um, would, would be cool, and you know, if you wanna throw me uh, the link to it or, or whatever, or connect me with the person that's selling it, let me know, you know, cause I, I really would be curious to try it out and check it out and, and see what it's like. Well, it just so happened that he had this 64 ES335 for sale. And 64 is a great year for the ES335 because it has the wide nut. These are the original patent number pickups, the original pots, no breaks on this guitar whatsoever. And yes, it's definitely an expensive instrument. There's no denying this, right? But it is not the price of a 59 ES335 where some of them are going for 80 grand, I mean, 100 grand. Some of these are, are just insane. And honestly, this is not just because I own this guitar, but honestly, I feel that this guitar sounds better than a lot of these 59 ES335s that I have played, to be completely honest with you. But anyways, all of these instruments that I own here have truly fallen on my lap. I've never really been like, oh man, I'm gonna find that thing, man, and I'm gonna hunt it down and, and, and do this and do that. I mean, I, I've just happened to stumble at the right place at the right time. This guitar just so happened that he happened to be selling it. So I said, all right, well, how about I come over and, and check it out and plug it up? And man, when I plugged this thing in and I started playing it, I was just in love, man. And um, for anybody out there that is a guitar player that knows this feeling that when you find that instrument, man, it is a really special moment, man. You really resonate with it personally. And it's just like, you have to do whatever it takes to get it. And so, that's the thing for me, man, with this instrument. That's exactly how I felt, was that feeling. And I love 335s, man. I think you can really do just about anything with these guitars. I mean, this guitar with my Fender Esquire, you could pretty much do just about anything with those two guitars. Um, it, it really covers all grounds and all tones. 
But all of this stuff that I own here, even the amplifiers, okay, now you could say that the vintage Marshalls, right, the Plexis and the Super Leads that I have, you could say that that's the collector side of me, right? Is it really necessary to have four of them? Definitely not, <laughs> okay? I definitely don't need four vintage Marshall Plexis. It's totally ridiculous, but... I like to collect, man. They're very rare, they're hard to find, and the Marshall Plexi is my favorite amp. So I don't care what anybody thinks. I don't care. I like to collect this stuff, and I love this stuff, man. I don't really go out. I don't go get drunk every night here in Nashville. Um, the Nashville prices are outrageous. I can't believe what people are paying here. It's totally insane, man, totally outrageous. And uh, you know, I don't really go out, man. I work in my online business, and the money that I make I reinvest into my business. I reinvest it as a guitar player. You know, and here in Nashville, I'm starting to work now in the studios. I'm starting to get more session work and stuff. So the whole idea with these vintage instruments is that I wanna be able to bring them into the studio and I wanna use them for my online business and for myself because I prefer the tone of these vintage instruments and I prefer the way that these play. They're just simply better instruments. And I've, I've been outspoken about this a lot here on the channel and that I think it's insane what the reissue instruments are going for, what they price them at. And um, man, I would much rather just work my ass off and save up the money and get the real deal, man. That's honestly my, my approach. And that has been my approach for many, many years, folks. This did not just happen overnight, man. This has been a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, man. A lot of hard work. And, um, you know, it does kind of frustrate, it really does kind of frustrate me sometimes when it's like, you know, I get some of these negative comments or whatever, and it's like, man, you know, I'm working my ass off here, man, to afford this stuff. I'm really fighting, man. I'm working my ass off here on this channel to make these videos. And I know the majority of you guys are wonderful, and I've met so many of you now in person. And uh, I gotta tell you, man, I mean, the support here on YouTube has been absolutely incredible. This YouTube channel has completely changed my life, completely changed my life. And it's a, you know, I really give a sincere thank you to each and every one of you that support my channel and support my music and support my plan. And man, I got to tell you, I, from the bottom of my heart, I sincerely thank you because without your support, I would not be able to live this life that I live. And uh, it is just incredible. I've met people from all over the world that I, I've made an impact on, and it just really means a lot to me. And I consider my fans my friends. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe and check it out. Check out my other content. You know, I'd love to have you join up here. But anyways, back to the instruments here. So that's really the thing with this stuff, guys, is that this stuff really just falls in my lap. I have all the connections. I know a lot of people. And even here on YouTube, I get offered gear and different stuff. Um, and like I say, if it's the right price and it's something that's cool that I really like, this stuff is very well thought out, folks. This guitar, I sat down with it. I checked out the frets checked out the nut, checked out these pickups. How do they sound? How does it play? How well does it stay in tune? You know, this is not just a random purchase that I'm just buying. No, man, this stuff is really thought out. I wanted one great ES-335. I wanted to get a late 60s Les Paul Custom, but now I'm almost thinking that I don't even need a late 60s Les Paul Custom now because I have a 63 Gibson SG now as well, which is wonderful. Um, the SG is a little bit of a different tone from the Les Paul. You get this mid-range punch versus a Les Paul is a nice big fat bodied tone. But I have this ES-335. So really, I don't even really need a late 60s Les Paul Custom in my opinion. Um, so I have the SG now. So that's gonna be my, my mid-range punch is the SG. I have this ES-335 that is just beautiful sounding, can cover just about anything. And then I have a 64 Firebird 5 that I just stumbled on by walking in randomly to a guitar center here in Nashville where I happened to buy it off the original owner. I mean, it was incredible, this whole story with that. And I'd be happy to share that. And I have shared it actually here over this channel, but that was just fate, man, that I managed to come across that. I was not even looking for that guitar at all. And I just happened to walk in there and um, managed to be at the right place at the right time and bought it. But anyways, then I found the 64 Fender Strat that I have. It's a pre-CBS transition logo Strat that has the original gray bottom pickups, original pots, everything. And it's a wonderful instrument as well. That also fell into my lap. You know, I happened to be in upstate New York at the time. And um, 
there was a local shop there that I had paid for like advertisement or something. And I was just scrolling through my phone and all of a sudden I see they have a listing, 64 vintage Fender Stratocaster. And I'm like, wait, what? Like in this place, they mainly sell like entry level instruments. So, you know, really, you know, cause they mainly teach is their whole thing there. They're not really like a vintage guitar dealer, but anyways, so I walk in there and the whole story with it was that the original owner his mom had bought that guitar from this exact business because this place is still the same name. It's still in business to this day after all these years. I want to say this place has been open for like 90 years or something like this. I mean, something insane. But um, they were a Fender and Gibson dealer back in, in 64. Well, his mom buys him this guitar, this 64 Fender Strat. And then I just so happened to be in town for the holidays and the original owner takes the guitar and sells it to the back to the same business after all these years, and then I end up buying it. So it just so happened to be the right place at the right time, the perfect timing, you know? I could go on and on about all of these different instruments, folks, but the, the, this video is gonna get so long, it'll be insane. But, um, you know, I love this stuff, man. The, the bottom line with all of this is I love vintage guitars. I love finding that perfect instrument. Now, I don't want to have a lot of instruments, man. As I say, I have seven instruments all in. That's it. That's all I have. Um, but I really want to make sure that it's the right investment. I want to make sure it's all the right stuff. So even before I bought this guitar, I had Grun go through it all and make sure that everything was good with it. Um, not that I don't trust the person that I'm getting this guitar from, but I just wanted to have them go through it. And um, that's what I did, man. I mean... And I love vintage instruments. I love this stuff. And, you know, to be honest, I don't care what anybody has to say. I do not care one bit. Honestly, I do not care. Um, I love this stuff. I love playing music, man. I enjoy it so much, man. And um, I'll never look at this as a competition, man. I'm just going to keep doing my thing, man. I'm going to have fun and I'm, I'm going to enjoy it. And um, thank you guys so much for all the support. I just really wanted to say that once again. And uh, this channel has just been absolutely amazing. And um, I've made so many friends here now, and I really consider all of my fans my friends. So if you have not joined my channel already, be sure to please subscribe to my channel, like the video and drop a comment, and check out my one-on-one -on -one Zoom lessons, folks. JKM4231 at gmail.com, folks. And that is all for today. Thank you all so much for watching. Love you all. Take care.